Hi, this is Manos Berlakis, and this is case 143 for the Manual of Percutaneous Coronary Interventions. This is a case that started in an interesting and stressful way. The patient was a gentleman with previous ventricular assist device placement who presented with multiple ICD shocks and was referred for coronary angiography. He did have an INR of 2.8, and this is the arterial pressure waveform, which is fairly flat, but he has a heart made VAD. And this was the first injection of contrast into the left main coronary artery. The question is, how many complications do we see in this one injection? And the answer is, we see at least three complications. The first one is... The first one is a dissection. It looks like the catheter is wedged in the distal left main and has caused a dissection in the distal left main. The second one is a orthocoronary dissection. The contrast did not only dissect into the main, but also there is contrast backflow subintimally extending all the way to the aortic cusp. And we can see highlighted the leaflets of the aortic cusp. So the patient did have an aortocoronary dissection. And the third complication is air embolization, which happens sometimes when there is not a good preparation of the guide catheter. So retrospectively, the catheter was likely wedged against the wall of the aorta. And then with uh, equipment advancement, the wire withdrawal, there was likely air aspirated inside the guy cutter that was injected when the contrast was infused. So definitely not a great way to start a case. What do we do? We do here have a dissection, including an aortocoronary dissection. This is a treatment algorithm. The first question is, do we have wire in the vessel? In this particular case, we did not because that was a diagnostic catheter in the first injection. And if we don't, the key next step is to advance a guide wire through the area of dissection, confirm we're in the true lumen, and then place a stand. If this fails, then emergency bypass might be needed. What can cause your coronary dissection? The most common cause is deep coronary engagement, especially in a diseased left main, as was likely the cause in this particular patient. Other reasons include forceful contrast injection, pressure dampening. Here, we could not really tell about pressure dampening because the patient had a ventricular assist device and had no pulsatile arterial waveform. What to do if there is aortocoronary dissection? The main thing to not do is to inject contrast because that can enlarge the dissection. So stop injecting. And then the treatment is by placing a stent all the way into the aorta, confirming that the placement is good with intravascular ultrasound, and then potentially doing serial TEE or a CT, a CAT scan of the chest, to ensure that there is no extension of the dissection more distally. The patient also had air embolization. Most likely the reason for, happening, for having this happen is the pressure dampening and air aspiration inside the guide catheter. What to do? Give 100% oxygen. If there is a massive amount of air, try to aspirate it, either with a guide or with a microcatheter. If the patient arrests, intracoronary epinephrine can be given and CPR can be performed. Fortunately, the patient remained uh, remarkably stable, which was to a large extent because of the ventricular assist device. We did perform angiography of the right coronary artery that uh, demonstrated no significant lesions with collaterals going all the way to the LED. We're then trying to engage the left main to provide treatment, but we could not aspirate the guide catheter after it advanced to the aortic root. So we did remove the guide catheter, and then after it was outside the body, we flushed it, and there were, there were these large pieces of thrombus that were retrieved. So what most likely happened is that the patient had clot formed in the sheath, that was picked up by the chi catheter on its way up to the coronary arteries and that plugged it up. And that was confirmed when we aspirated from the guide, there were several pieces of thrombus that were removed. Eventually, we were able to advance um, a guide catheter through a new sheath and then advanced a workhorse guide wire into the LAD and the circumflex. 
It is important to not use polymer jacketed wires once there is dissection, as in this particular case, because this uh, would be more likely to go within the dissection plane instead of uh, crossing into the distal true lumen. So workhorse guide wires for both LAD and eventually we can see the LAD wire made it further distal. That wire was exchanged for an atherectomy device because of the significant calcification in the LAD and we inserted a Viper flex tip guide wire over which um, we performed multiple rounds of orbital atherectomy after removing the circumflex wire. This is important to avoid uh, potential fracture of the wire when uh, the atherectomy crown um, reaches the area of the wire. We then placed stents uh, in the mid LAD all the way to the ostium of the left main, jailing the circumflex after we had inserted a guide wire into the circumflex. We were then able to rewire the circumflex using a Sasuke dual lumen microcatheter. Again, can be very useful in facilitating side branch reaxis after jailing. And then we did uh, a kissing balloon inflation in the LAD as well as the circumflex, followed by a final proximal optimization with a 4.5 by 8 millimeter NC balloon. And this provided a nice result. We still have some contrast staining within the cusp, and that's why we actually minimized our injections. And the LAD looks wonderful. But now we have a new problem, which is that we have lost our flow into the circumflex. And during attempts to deliver the stents, there was some movement of the wire into the circumflex, and it appears that the wire movement likely caused the dissection of the circumflex. Of course, this is challenging. What, how can we re-enter into the distal true lumen? We tried workhorse wires, but it was not successful. We then tried uh, a stingray balloon to try to re-enter, but that was also not successful. And uh, in the end, um, we could not get the equipment to go through. We tried to do the start technique with a polymer jacketed wire, but did not really get much flow. But uh, fortunately, the patient remained chest pain free, but he did have a tachycardia and ICD shocks. He did have a new ICD lead, but uh, Unfortunately, despite that, he continued to have ventricular tachycardia, and he was eventually listed for heart transplantation. So there are multiple lessons from this particular case. The first uh, lesson is the guide pressure tampening, the importance of not injecting if this is happening. Of course, in this patient, and it was challenging to know that there was pressure dampening because he did not have pulsatile arterial pressure because of the ventricular assist device. Another big lesson is that if we cannot aspirate through a guide catheter, we should never inject. Instead, the guide should be removed without inserting a guide wire and flushed outside the body because sometimes, as in our case, clot may have formed in the sheath and then inserted into the guide catheter. And if you inject that clot into the coronary, catastrophic consequences would likely follow. In this case, we had a coronary and aortocoronary dissection. If that happens, the number one thing is to not inject, stand the ostium, use IVUS for optimization. And finally, after all this work and finally after getting flow into the LAD, we did have a likely dissection in the mid-circumflex compromising flow. So the lesson there is to minimize wire movement during attempts to deliver a stand also, to try to have workhorse wire, which is less likely to be traumatic to the vessel, than if a polymer jacketed or a stiff wire is used. Thank you.